Ari Aster is a genius. He wrote and directed Hereditary, Midsummer, and Bo is Afraid. He also created a bunch of short films, and we're gonna talk about those in the video as well. These short films are not where he thrives, though. He definitely thrives when he's given two plus hours and enough time to create an atmosphere, an amazing cast, and a really mysterious, ominous world. Feature length movies, and that's the main thing that we're gonna be talking about today. They are some of my favorite movies of all time, especially Hereditary. This movie just holds so much weight to me. It's Definitely my favorite horror movie and might be my favorite movie of all time. The only other one that's really contesting it is It 2017, which started my love of horror movies. Anyway, enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. Spoiler warning for all the feature length films. You should definitely watch all of them before you watch the segments, but we do have them segmented out. So if you haven't seen some of them, just skip that portion of the video because I am going to talk about the whole movie, including even the ending. So definitely spoiler warning. Like I said, It 2017 sparked my love of horror movies, and chasing that, I didn't find another horror movie I really loved until I found Hereditary in 2018. Hereditary is an amazing movie. It just is a banger the whole way through. It's definitely a slow burn, but it's the best slow burn that I've ever seen, where the payoff isn't just the very, very end. The slow burn takes an effect immediately. The movie starts with a family that already has tragedy. The first scene is them at a funeral for the grandmother, or Annie's mom. Annie's not too broken up about it as they were already kind of estranged and it was kind of just a weird dynamic between them anyway. However, about 20 minutes into the film, tragedy occurs once again, leaving Charlie deceased this time. Actually leaves the family in ruin and breaking. That's actually the first scene that I thought was incredibly good. You have Annie just destroyed, crying on the ground. Why Charlie, why not me? I just wanna die. That's something that a mother should never have to deal with, is their 13-year-old daughter dying. Then it pans over to Peter in the hallway, destroyed and dealing with it in a completely different way, all inward instead of outward. However, that's not the scene, the first scene, that really starts everything off. The first scene is the dream sequence. This is about 50 minutes in, and it's just an amazing scene. Earlier in the movie, Annie admits to sleepwalking. This is just a normal thing that can happen for her. And one time she actually had this really scary sleepwalking incident where she poured paint thinner on herself and Peter and had a lit match in her hand. Paint thinner is incredibly flammable. So this was definitely a very traumatizing thing to happen for Peter and Annie, but admittedly it's definitely worse for Peter. Peter held that forever and has kind of a resentment against his mom or maybe even a fear. Enter the dream sequence. Now that we're caught up, we know that sleepwalking is a natural occurrence for her. However, now she's dealing with a lot of trauma currently. A lot of bad things are happening in her life. Now we know it's a dream because immediately when she wakes up, there's a huge trail of ants that leads to a deceased Peter. So obviously she knows that this is a dream, but then she has a false wake up. She wakes up, she thinks she snaps out of it and is awake now. See chills? I got goosebumps. I, got, I literally got goosebumps. It's crazy. I'm thinking about this dream sequence. It's, it's crazy. Now we think we're safe. Now we think that everybody's awake and there's nothing else that can happen. However, it's still in a dream. She then blurts out something that she wouldn't say. I never wanted to be your mother. Why? Then they're visibly wet with paint thinner. She then has a flammable match in her hand and lights it burst into flames. Now she wakes up. I usually don't really like dream sequences in horror movies, especially in horror movies. Dreams are bad because they just give you a false sense of something bad that's happening and it never is real because it's a dream. And like bad dreams are too easy in horror movies. I think they're lazy usually, but this one was really good. Pulling out that fake sense of safety when I get, gain that safety and then they do the callback to the paint thinner story. It's really I mean, scary. Like, it, it was actually genuinely scary. And then she wakes up Peter, and then we go into the seance scene, and the seance scene is crazy. Tawny, this is one of her best acting experiences in the entire movie, when she's manically asking and convincing Peter and Steve, the father, both to be part of this seance. 
please, I know how it sounds, but there's no way to talk about it. I just need to show you, okay? Please, you'll see. I'm completely lucid. Peter, go to bed. What? No, 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 Peter, please. We need to do this as a family. This needs all our energies, okay? Together. It's very obvious that some su supernatural things are happening now, and everybody is scared. It's really, really crazy. And then she brings Charlie into her body, or at least what they think is Charlie. Mom? 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 I don't like this. Dad, I don't like this. What's happening? Please stop. Please, please. What's going stop on? This. Mom! Please, stop. please, you really freak me out. Please stop. What's Dad, happening? Why is stop. everyone please scared? Stop. Why are you scaring them? Make it stop. The scene is insane. I mean, the scene is absolutely terrifying. This is scary. I mean, this is one of the scariest scenes. Definitely the best possession I've ever seen because it's realistic and, well, may, all right, maybe not realistic, but it's not like she's floating, spinning her head around. Like it's, it's real. And just the way that she's frantically looking around, where am I? She's screaming the distortion in her voice. It's all scary. And you can tell from Peter and the look on Steve's face that they believe this that this is actually happening, that it's not Annie just making, you know, a farce. You know that it's happening. It's fucking scary. I mean, honestly, it's really scary. I get chills every time I watch this, and this is the third time that I watch this movie. I watched the movie again for the video. It was the third time, and I got chills, and it just completely enthralled me. I, there was not a single thought in my mind. I, I was watching the movie, and that's it. I couldn't look away from the scene. The scene was insane. The, the possession, the seance, the dream sequence, this string of scenes is when this movie just kicks it up into the next gear and it's just insane. It's so good. It's so good. Then you have the Peter in class scene that's just very, very scary. The full possession over it. And then the ending, the full climax, everything comes together and it's, it's wild. It's really crazy. And then you actually get to be filled in with everything that's happened. And I remember the first time I watched this movie, I was in awe. I was in complete shock at the end. I thought that the ending was unbelievable. The fact that everything came together, there were clues the entire movie, and, and we just get to see everything come together at the end. And it's like to bring back a god of mischief. It's just, it's incredible. Masterpiece movie, 10 out of 10. Uh, there's nothing else I can say. Watch the movie again. <laughs> You'll love it. It's really good. It's really good. The first time I watched this movie, it was a random streamable movie. I had no clue it was an Ari Aster film. I didn't really know what A24 movies were. I didn't have really any kind of tie to the movie. I just watched it. I went downstairs, my brother was watching it, and it was about 15 minutes in. He told me the premise of the movie, the fact that they're all going to like this festival in Sweden. And then I watched it and it was really good. And I didn't have the intro. And the intro is a really important piece of the movie. It brings you into the characters' lives. It actually gives you reasoning for why Danny is just destroyed throughout the entire time. I didn't know the backstory. I didn't know anything about any of these characters. But a few years later, now I've rewatched the movie with the intro in mind. I actually watched it two more times. Um, so this is another movie that I've seen three times, but I guess like 2.8 times, <laughs> something like that. But the intro is incredible. Giving both point of views from Danny and Christian. Christian's talking with a bunch of his friends, how he wants to break things off with Danny because she has too much baggage. And Danny admittedly does have a lot of baggage, but it's not really her fault. She doesn't get to pick her family and her sister is kind of insane. She has bipolar issues, you know, problems with killing herself. And she sends an email talking about how it, she might do it. She says goodbye at the end of her message. Christian's dealing with this with her and he's not dealing with it but the best way, but it's admittedly a really, really hard problem to to solve for somebody else is comforting somebody that's going through family troubles of like this caliber and then they go to sweden i'm sorry no I'm... no i'm sorry no you're fine i'm gonna just go to the bathroom thank you She's now locked into going to Sweden a few weeks or something. It's a very long trip right after her whole family dies. How can you do that? I, I mean, honestly, how, how would you be in the mindset to go to that with that happening in her life? It's crazy, but she goes. Some of the ways that Ari Aster builds suspense and makes it out to be that they're on the way to such a sinister place is amazing. From the turbulent transition on the plane
to the upside down cinematography distorting the beautiful landscape that is being shown it just shows there's something sinister going on this movie i think does a really good job at creating a big cast of of characters you have a lot of characters that matter a lot you know you of course have the main friend group of danny and christian and their three friends they're a swedish friend pell and then you have josh the like calculated smart guy that's going on this retreat for his studies in school for his thesis and then you also have mark the funny guy that's kind of just going along for the ride going because he thought it would be a fun festival where he gets to smash some swedish tang that's really it that's literally why he's going but all the characters feel real they feel like real humans that do actual things that they would want to do every action has a reaction and consequences you know you go and pee on a sacred tree all of them are going to go insane on you you are going to die he's, and he does once they actually get there it really starts a spiral of bad and unsettling events happening over and over and over they still don't really know what they're getting into and at the first location they actually just trip on shrooms thinking that okay well this is going to be a fun you know music festival it's just like a festival Festival where we just like do fun things have feasts like it's just a good time so they trip on mushrooms which is really bad idea for danny because she has an incredibly bad trip which makes sense because how could you trip on mushrooms when your whole family just died two weeks ago i i don't think that's a good idea and she doesn't think it's a good idea but she still does it because she wants everybody to have a good time and she doesn't want to be the only person that's bringing them down and then she has an incredibly bad time and they wake up and go to the next festival, the next part of the festival, which is the actual, you know, setting for the rest of the movie. That was just the start of the bad events that happen. There's a lot of new events that happen. We get introduced to a couple of new characters, but none of them really matter too much because they do end up dying. Really, the next part that I want to talk about is when only Danny and Christian are left out of the friend group, which means Josh and Mark also died, which... It makes sense for them to have died in this because they're sacrifices after all. Anyway, getting into the actual climax of the movie, which starts really at the flowering scene, right? The flower ceremony where Danny is running around dancing on, you know, drug, whatever the tea was that they drank that makes them experience all this in a crazy way. She has a good time and a bad time and a really bewildering time. She has no idea what all is going on. She's just dancing around. And at one point she even is convinced she can speak Swedish, which maybe she could. I don't know. The other person was saying that they could talk together so i don't know after that she is crowned the flower queen and then goes off to do some ritual that you know gives them crops the following year whatever something like that whatever that starts the deflowering ceremony that christian is part of and this is incredible this is and, and by incredible i don't mean incredibly good it's just insane it's 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 a really graphic scene uh, it has a lot of nudity i can't show it on youtube sorry everybody that's seen the movie knows the scene i think the only scene that i can think of that is as uh insane like just crazy just wild is men the climax of the movie Men, which of course is another A24 movie. All the A24 movies uh, are really weird, right? And all of these these two ceremonies culminate together into a really wild climax into the building that was foreshadowed earlier as a building that we can't go into. It's a sacred building. And that's what we burn down for sacrifices. It's like nine sacrifices every year. Half of them are themselves and half of them are people that are brought in from pilgrimage from other people. The movie is crazy. It's a good movie. Very unique. A very unique horror movie. Let's talk about the shorts. I'm not gonna go that in depth in the shorts. I'll talk about them in order. Herman's Cure All. Dude, fuck this movie. Fuck this video. This short is awful to me. I, I don't, I, I hate it. I really hate it. I think this one really just like mostly benefits from shock because it's just an incredibly weird and, and honestly just gross short film and it's an, it's definitely interesting but it's it's gross it's gross tino's dick farts it really works that's all i'm gonna say the strange thing about the johnsons is another one that's just gross it, it's it's really weird it takes like a sixth graders comedic idea and makes it into a serious 30 minute film that is just uncomfortable and that's really all I got to say about it. It's it's one that I don't really recommend to watch. 
Bo, you're fucked, pal. I accidentally watched a different Bo short film from somebody else, and I thought it was bad and boring, and then I found out that I watched the wrong one. And the real Bo is really just like a short that I think Bo is Afraid was built upon, and I like it. It's cool, especially since I watched it after I watched the new movie Bo is Afraid, and I liked it. Basically, this was weird. This was a change of pace completely. It was like a, this narration thing where there's this rich actress that talks about her life for... 12 minutes or something like that. It gets a little deep at one point, but overall it's kind of just boring. I was kind of expecting weird things to happen. And there were like two times where something weird happened and she kind of addresses it, but kind of doesn't. So I don't know, it's fine. It's definitely something that you could watch, especially if you're gonna watch the one later that I do recommend. And I think you should watch this one and then that one. Munchausen. This is a weird one, dude. It's too artsy for me. It's too artsy. It's all music. There's no dialogue. It's really just like that one scene in Up but 12 minutes long. Once again, not really one that I would wanna watch again. It really drags in the fact that it's all music and no dialogue. I don't know, it, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me. The Turtle's Head. This one was literally a comedy, I think. It has some weird stuff going on as well. The whole thing, the premise is like a dick shrinking. Uh, like this dude it, that loves sex, his dick shrinks until it goes inside of him and then it ends. So I don't really know. It's definitely a weird one. It was pretty funny though, admittedly. Like I, I was laughing a couple times during it, which uh, it, it was definitely funny. It's definitely funny in like a sixth grade way though. C'est la vie. This is the last short film and it's very similar to basically, but it's the exact opposite. So it's once again, a character that's just talking about their life in like story narration fashion, where they're just like talking while the world around them is happening and they're barely interacting with the world around them. I, I liked this one. It gets like a little deep and it's like a little interesting and it's only seven minutes. So this one is definitely worth watching. I would honestly say like watch basically and then this and the turtle said, and maybe Herman's cure all if you really want to know like more about Ari Aster, the fact that this was his first creation is insane. How, like, it's very shocking. It's very, I think it benefits mostly from just a shock value that puts it like right in front of you. But that's really all I have to say. I don't know. All of the short films are weird in like, I, I think it's definitely true that he thrives in full length movie fashion, making movies that are full length and he can, you know, has time and room to make something good. I mean, Bo's Afraid is three hours. It's a three hour movie. So, yeah. I just got back from Bo is Afraid, and by just got back, I mean I got back last night at like 2 in the morning, so it's the next morning. But Bo is Afraid was really cool. It was a really interesting movie, a surreal experience. It was a three hour long movie, which is an incredibly long movie and I saw it in theaters. And this is the first Ari Aster film I saw in theaters. I got to enjoy the time a little bit better because it was at the theaters, which, you know, it's just a better movie experience. And this is definitely a movie that I would recommend to see in theaters because it really immerses you more into the world. And the world is incredibly well painted by Ari Aster. I think that's my favorite part of the movie is how ridiculously surreal and scary the world is meant to be. I think that's definitely through Bo's eyes because that's kind of, you know, how I perceived the whole movie was that it was surreal, uh, incredibly surreal experience. And we're seeing it through Bo's eyes because Bo is afraid of everything in the world. So he makes everything out to be the worst that it could possibly be. So bad that it probably would never even feasibly happen in the world. He's so afraid of the world that he turns on the TV to the news channel and it just shows naked man is outside stabbing everybody, stabbing every single civilian he sees. It's crazy. Every two, every minute, every two minutes, something like this happens where he goes outside for one second and hundreds of homeless people just funnel into his apartment. There were some great scenes. My favorite scenes in the movie, there's two of them, is just the simple opening of creating this world. He's walking around and the, the world is just filled with such like scary components you have. He walks outside of his therapist's office and he looks up and there's just a man at the top of a building about to jump. And then you look like across the street and there's a naked man dancing crazy like and then you look across the street again and now there's a crazy tatted human that is fully tatted chasing you it's just the whole world was painted so vividly and surreal that you don't know if anything is actually happening or this is what Bo makes it out to be it's so cool I, I love the world that Ari Aster made in this movie and it never slows down it just continues to be crazy surreal and just scary like the world is so violent i love that i love the world 
in this. The world building felt phenomenal. And the other scene that was my favorite scene, definitely my favorite scene, is the play scene. About halfway through, maybe maybe a little longer, maybe a little less, I don't remember. It was a three hour movie. The play scene was so cool. It opens up as this really colorful environment. And as soon as they open up the play, you know it's about him. You know that this play that randomly he stumbles upon is completely about him. And then the play just keeps going, starts to narrate his entire life. And it goes on for like 20, 30 minutes it's so weird the colors are crazy the designs around him are crazy the world is drawn around him with play props and setups you have like the the cardboard houses and then drawn people with like masks white mask faces it's really weird and cool and then they start to explain his life that he has in this made up environment and then somehow comes back to him stumbling upon a play that's they're talking about him and that's this whole thing that's the whole thing they like broke into so meta i i don't know this it's so weird and cool and it just completely kept my attention the whole way through especially that play scene i was expecting it to be three minutes it was 25. I think it's hard to, for me to talk about this movie right now because it's still sinking in. I think everything's so cool. I want to see this movie a second time. I'm probably going to see it in theaters a second time. I, I think there's definitely a lot of hidden meanings and a lot of things that happened or at least hidden, you know, expected meanings that you're supposed to take in your own way of any kind. I think the horror movies, there's a lot of horror movies nowadays that are just getting really crazy. And I don't even know if this goes into that horror movie genre, but it's very surreal. And a big piece of this movie is that you get to take away whatever you want to take away from it. So you can watch this movie and then experience it in whatever kind of way. And then you talk to your friend that watched the same movie in the same theater right next to you. And they have completely different things that they took away. Obviously it has the base meaning of Bo is afraid of everything. So he villainizes everything and makes the whole world seem evil it was really cool and crazy and unique and its own movie and it doesn't even feel like it goes into any kind of genre or subgenre. i don't know if i can call this a horror movie i don't know if i can call this just a surreal experience i i really don't know but i loved it i i really i really loved it also dick monster well i think that's all i have for this video thanks so much for watching guys and check out more content on my channel i recommend this one next I talk about all the A24 horror movies and rank them. If you like movies like Ari Aster films, you'll like some of the movies on this list. Subscribe.